Hello, my friends. May the Holy Spirit open the understanding of all of you so that all may understand His Word, His message, His thoughts so that once applying it in your own life, you will enjoy the benefits of faith. The benefits of faith, the supernatural faith, the intelligent faith, the faith which is rational, the faith which is supported on the Word of God and not in feelings and not in the things which are seen, not on the things which are felt and touched, but on the things which are strictly spiritual. Yesterday, an interesting case, interesting in the matter or in the point as a sad testimony, a very sad story, testimony, because these examples which we place, we post here on Instagram, these sad examples, they are to show people to keep watch. That's it. When we were starting in the faith, we saw many upsets within the church. But those upsets served not for me to criticize, no, none of that. Those upsets would put me in a position, how can I say, a position of attention, exactly that, alert. I was alert. I was attentive so that I would not commit the same mistakes which I was seeing before my eyes. And the same purpose. We have shown here magnificent testimonies of the power of God. Is it not true? Things which God has done in an extraordinary manner. But we cannot omit the sad testimonies so that people may position themselves, they may see and evaluate their own lives, for you to see your own life. So yesterday I was speaking to Bishop Jadson from Rio de Janeiro, and he was saying that one of his auxiliaries lost his brother. His brother was lost in drugs, but was delivered, set free, healed, but all of a sudden died. He got sick and died. And what happened? His sister, when he found out at night, when he found out, he got the news that his brother died. Immediately, she died as well. And we were asking each other, but why? How could this happen? But it's what is written in the sacred scriptures. When Jesus said, look at what Jesus said. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your heart will be there also. He was saying to me as well, as a testimony, that there was a woman who was in the church for 30 years praying for her son, praying, crying out on behalf of her son. 30 years. And she did not receive the Holy Spirit. She did everything she could, but she did not receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Because her treasure was her son. 
her heart was in her son. Till the day she was set free from being bound and she received the Holy Spirit. So I would like you to learn with these facts how you should behave before the facts which are happening around you and perhaps with you. Because when Paul wrote to the Romans to a new church, new Christians, newly converted, him with much clarity says, for to be carnally minded is death. For to be carnally minded is death. If a person is an official of the church, a pastor, bishop, assistant, member, this does not matter. What matters is the following. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you need to choose, you need to opt for what you want. If you want life and peace, so invest your heart in the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And if you were baptized with the Holy Spirit, do not have this as, well, now I can rest, now I can be tranquil, no. You need to maintain yourself in spirit. It's what Paul says in the beginning of this letter to Rome. He says, look, walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Meaning when a person is in the spirit, walking in the spirit, he is bulletproofing his own salvation which is the most precious thing which exists on the face of the earth. There is nothing more glorious, nothing more rich, nothing more powerful than salvation, the salvation of a soul. It's very difficult. Jesus said, how difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He said this. And then the person says, well, the disciples ask, but Lord, being so, who can be saved? But Jesus was not saying that the riches, the riches condemns people to hell. No, he was saying exactly this, which Paul is teaching. Being carnally minded. When a person has riches, when a person has a lot of money, He lives boasting normally. He lives tranquil because he trusts in his riches, in his possessions. If he has a stomach ache, he calls the best doctor in the world to his home to heal him because he trusts in his riches. He trusts in his riches. There in Jeremiah, God says, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. So when a person receives the Holy Spirit, he has knowledge of God. He has experiences with God. He knows whom he is leaving, living with. So when a person is sealed with the Holy Spirit, he needs to maintain himself in spirit, walking in spirit. Because if he deviates from one to the other side, if he inclines just a bit, from one side to the other, he goes there ahead, 
he will be fallen completely. Remember when God said to Joshua, Look Joshua, arise and take possession of the promised land. Obey and follow what Moses commanded you. Do not deviate from the left or to the right, nor to the right or to the left. So follow the straight line, meaning focus your thoughts, your spirit, in that which I spoke and taught, which I gave to Moses. So, as the case of this young lady who died, when she heard of the death of a brother, meaning she died on the same day he died. Why? Why did she die? She died because her heart was her treasure, which was in her brother. So when the brother died, where did the brother go? To the tomb. Where did her heart go? It also went to the tomb. She died as well. So we reach the conclusion, which is our intention, is exactly this, that salvation is something so but so precious that it is worth you dedicate 24-7 a day, a week, 365 days a year, for all your life, investing in the salvation, guarding, protecting, keeping, See that Paul says there, I fought the good fight, I kept the faith, I kept the faith, meaning I needed to combat. Remember, I said there is a conflict which all of us go through, those who have and do not have. But all of us have this conflict between the thoughts and the heart. Every time we need to decide, where will we go? Where will we incline? To the things of God or to the things of the heart? The heart is deceitful. It is corrupt. So we cannot give attention to the voice of the heart because it leads people to death, as the case of this lady. Lost the brother because her heart was on her brother. So you who are mothers or fathers, you who are children, you who have your loved ones in your heart, you need to immediately let go of this and put the Lord Jesus Christ as the first in your life. He will not die anymore. He died, resurrected, is alive, and He will guarantee, His Spirit guarantees your eternal life. So, let us put the heart on Him. Focus the heart on Him. He needs to be your treasure. He needs to be your priority. Not the son, the daughter, the mother, the brother. I already told you that when I converted, when I had my encounter with God, I let go of my first love who was my mother, who was my healthy and loving mother. My mom, especially to us men, myself and my siblings, my brothers, it was God in heaven and the children on earth. And we, I at least, returned this love. She was the first in my life. And this relationship, besides it being a beautiful and wonderful, respectful relationship, but it cannot surpass its limits. When I met Jesus, I needed to choose between my mother or Jesus. And obviously I chose the Lord Jesus. And what happened? My mother was jealous. My mother was jealous because from that moment, she was no longer in the first place of my life. So, there are many parents who have the same feeling of putting their children in the first place. 
children who have the same feeling of putting their parents in the first place. I have a family member who is in the church for a very long time, but he did not convert. But it's not one, it's many, various. He did not convert. Do you know why he did not? Do you know why he did not receive the Holy Spirit? Because he has his family as the first in his life. He is in love with his kids, in love with the nephews and nieces, and the more they get born, the more in love he becomes. Meaning he left, although know with this word, he loves more his loved ones, his family members than God himself who saved him. Jesus gave his life for us. How can I love someone else above him? Only if someone gave their life for me. And still, would it be enough because this person needs to be perfect like Jesus. But Jesus gave his life for me and he is my Lord, my Savior. He is the first. So if I lose my kids, I will not die. If I lose my wife, I will not die. If I lose everything which I have, I will not die. I can only not live without the Spirit of God. This I will not let go of. No ways. Because He maintains me standing. He keeps me standing. He gives me faith to remain standing. So when Paul says, for to be carnally minded is death, meaning to death. He is giving the tip. Look, do not be mindful to anything or anyone, let alone vanities, money, lust, riches, luxury. When you see these rich people showing off planes and cars and other things, do not be mindful of these things. Don't look to others. Don't look to these people. Look to your life. Take care of your life. When you see someone married, well married, don't keep observing the lives of other people. Observe your own lives. Look at your life. Put your life on the altar. Your heart needs to be on the altar because on the altar, it is a living offering and God blesses. He empowers the altar which sanctifies the offering. So you're putting your offering on the altar, you're being kept and guarded because the altar is the dwelling of God. You know Psalm 91, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, meaning those who are with their hearts on the altar are kept guarded. No evil will touch them. Nothing will touch them unless the person leaves the altar, takes their heart out of the altar and goes around. Then, then it's over. So Paul says here that the inclination of the flesh is enmity against God. Of course, the Spirit of God is jealous of us. He does not want to share us with anyone. You know this. So you have to have this conscious. Be it to love your, your parents, your children, your husband, your wife, people, to love your neighbor. It's very important, extremely important. But this is only possible when you first love God. Because if you first, because if God is not the first in your life, if He's not the first love, then no one will be your love. No one will be loved by you. That is why God says, the first great commandment is to love the Lord your God, meaning dedicate your life to the Lord your God. And then you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. The good you want for yourself you will desire for others. So, 
This is a sacrificial love. There is no feelings. There is no emotions to it. So here we have this guidance and we need to follow this guidance every single day. So for example, I have the Holy Spirit. But it's not because I have the Holy Spirit that I will relax in faith. Oh, now I have the Holy Spirit. I am well, praise God. I will relax. I will go on holiday. There is no holidays from God. There is no holy day holiday from God. There is no rest. He needs to be 24-7 the center of our lives. Our heart needs to constantly be on the altar. Because the altar is what sanctifies the offering, the case, the heart. God bless you until tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.